Hi everyone. Um, hi, um, Nikolai. Yeah, like I like wearing uh, colanders in my head. Uh, one of many hobbies. Um, I came here to talk about a bit weird things like AI, artificial intelligence, uh, coding, JavaScript, computers, um, a lot of strange things. Uh, this talk is a bit of on the uh, strange side of the scale. There will be coding, there will be code, there will be JavaScript, there will be things, but it's not entirely about JavaScript per se. Um, essentially, I want to make love to your minds. <laughs> it's uh, Sharky, Sharky just uh, like made a great introduction today. It's like all makes sense. There will be a little love. Um, so. Uh, it, as I said, it's a bit of a weird story. It started roughly a year ago. A friend of mine uh, learned a new keyboard layout. Apparently there was a, a whole bunch of them out there. So he learned one and he said like, oh, it's great, I'm loving it. And I kind of wanted to do it for a while, so I kind of got encouraged and learned it as well. And um, it was different from QWERTY. Felt a bit like more efficient. Um, and I looked around and I found another layout that claimed to be better than the one I just learned. <laughs> I'm like, okay, bring it on. So I learned it. Uh, I spent roughly a month on it. It felt, again, differently, slightly more efficient. <laughs> so then I found the third <laughs> one. Like, and I'm, I spent another month on it. And uh, it's a long story. So um, I'm a committed guy. So like, and it's felt like a different again. So I started to scratch my head, like, what's really going on here? Like, uh, what are all the differences? Like, how does it even work? Um, so a brief history of uh, keyboard layouts. Uh, in 1873, believe it or not, uh, a company called Remington. Uh, made the first, one of the first uh, commercial typewriters and they made the squirty layout which we still use. They built it for a mechanical typewriter so, so that all the keys kind of skewed a bit sideways and it still is, which is like humans. Uh, the main purpose of QWERTY layout was that so that hammers on a typewriter wouldn't jump. They wasn't concerned with like efficiency or anything. They just wanted it like to machine to work. That's it. Um, then many years passed. In uh, 1936, uh, another guy named uh, Dworak uh, spent roughly 10 years of his life researching this problem, and he built another layout which, by my calculations, is roughly like 24% more efficient. It was a completely different layout, it completely work, uh, but it was more efficient. So he kind of proved that we can build it better. Then again, many, many, many years passed. And in 2006, uh, Michael Cole uh, created a new layout built specifically for computers. Uh, it looks kind of like QWERTY, uh, just a few letters uh, shift around. Uh, but he was, he created this model where your fingers, he would basically calculate me how, how much distance your fingers go to type this or that. And based on uh, this model, he created a new layout. It was just a slight improvement over Dwork, but like, a lot of people use it. It's actually like ISO standard. And in 2010, another guy created another layout, which was Workman. Uh, it's like very good layout, a different model. Uh, Anyway, so there is a progression, like there are a lot of people like thinking about these problems. And it started like, once I started to research problem, I started to think like, how did this rabbit hole really go? It's like, where is the bottom of it, really? Like, if they are so drastically different, what, what actually makes a good layout? Um, and I started to scratch my head, can I make one better? Like, if I just come up with something 1%, more efficient than everything else, like, I'm good. Like, my, my work on this planet is done. Like. 
Um, unfortunately, like, I'm not that smart. Like, all these guys, they probably have like a huge birds and like they read car marks for fun. I don't know. Uh, but like, I didn't know how to approach it, right? Like, but then I thought like, you know what? I work with computers. Maybe I should use a computer to solve this problem. Make it someone else's problem. So I looked around and I found this branch of artificial intelligence that's called uh, evolutionary algorithms and uh, they have a group called genetic algorithms. It's a really simple uh, AIs that can solve specific type of problems which can uh, people use for a long time. For example, they build these like tiny antennas for uh, spacecrafts with this thing. Like no human could design this thing. It's too hard. Like we just like make a square thing and be done with it, right? Uh, computer will actually like figure it. Or a lot of uh, modern uh, automotive uh, manufacturers use those algorithms to optimize milling of um, machine parts. Computer can optimize this process. Like uh, builders use like tensile strength calculations with that thing. So I thought like. We can deal with it, right? Um, so I built one. Um, yeah, like I'm going to teach you how to basically like procreate. Uh, <laughs> well, this it's all about love, right? So um, four easy steps to become a god. Step one: uh, express solution to your problem as a sequence. Um, in terms of like my specific problem, uh, it's a keyboard layout, right? It's just like a sequence of keys. Um, so like QWERTY exam, for example, it will be just a bunch of Q, W, E, R, T, Y, whatever, right? Uh, then you need to create random mutations of that solution. You need to do what's called, uh, create what's called a generation. You take a solution, uh, you basically create a bunch of variations of that solution, randomly, uh, randomly mutated, right? Pure JavaScript, we can do it. Uh, then you need to do what's called a tournament. tournament. You basically need to compare all these uh, random solutions and uh, grade them. You need to create a graded list of solutions and you need to pick two winners out of it. Um, there is like gazillion of methods to do it, but one of the simple one is simplest one is pick the best one, and then pick the random one from uh, best better half. That length minus one it should be like slash two. I misprinted. Uh, the point of this story is if you don't, if you always pick two best solutions, your Jena font will basically thin out and you will stack in what's called local maximum and you won't, like, you won't have enough variation in your Jena font to actually find a best solution. So, <clears throat> free love advice from Nikolai, so like don't look for the best, best, like randomly pick someone from better half, you will do great for... <laughs> no, I mean, that's science, right? Like, I've got an algorithm to prove it. <laughs> you will do service to the humanity. Um, and the final step, you need to, like, love, right? Um, So basically say you have two solutions, you pick two winners, right, mom and dad, and you need to come up with or like crossover as those to produce two offsprings. I named it kid one, kid two, like, great boyfriend material. Um, <laughs> and then you need to do like it all over again, right? So if there is a loop, basically you do, you go, you, uh, pick the score you want, like how good quality solution you want, then you pick two, two solutions for problem, you mutate them, create a generation, pick two best, well, two winners, my glove, start again. You do it all over again until, until you satisfied like with how good solution you, you need. That's pretty much like it. Right? 
Um, <laughs> a bit of a demo. Like, uh, I actually have a demo. Um, it takes a few seconds to boot, it reads like a bunch of things. I kind of sped it up. Um, so, see, it's analyzes variations here. Uh, there are generations counter, there is like solutions to things, and it compares solutions to QWERTY and Workman, and there is a bit of analysis and like whatever. So, it actually like thinks about this stuff, and it comes up with solutions. Uh, if you give it a bit of time, it, see, it already surpassed it query, query, and now it just made the best layout on this planet, like whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so like, I run this thing for, well, half a year. Um, there is like, um, well, let's say empirical maximum you can reach in terms of efficiency. Call it Nikolai's law. Like you, you, heard, it, you heard it here first. Um, so, like you can my, pretty much make a layout which is roughly 60% uh, more efficient than QWERTY. I'm still working on um, on on the model, but yeah, it's cool. Anyways, computers. Um, so. You probably got doubted about the simplicity of it, right? We just created mind, which is like 50 lines of code in JavaScript, probably. So a lot of you are probably thinking like, well, it's not life, it's just like a bunch of like if statements, right? Well, what is life, really? <laughs> I, I, fair warning, right? Consider this guy, right? <laughs> um, aside from being famous for making dirty jokes about cigars, he actually, he actually coined the idea how our mind works. He created the, um, well, basically, model for our brains. Uh, he coined this um, principle. He calls this like consciousness and unconsciousness. Consciousness is what's in your mind right now. That's what you're thinking. It's your conscious like, processes, right? Your reasoning. Uh, but there is like a huge block of uh, your brain power allocated to your subconscious, which basically holds your memories, your learned experience, past traumas, social dogmas, like a whole bunch of things. And uh, there is always interaction between those two. Your conscious process is always affected by your subconsciousness. In, in a sense, your consciousness kind of grinds through whatever is in your subconsciousness. Right? Uh, let me rephrase it in uh, terms you will understand. <laughs> so there is a client, right? That is your mind, right? It's like a rendered HTML page in a browser. That's what you are, like, really. There is web server, which is like pre-conscious. It's like a revolving door between those two. And there is a, like a sea of possibilities in a database, right? Somewhere, like it's a Facebook. You don't know what's there, right? You're just going around like uh, randomly, uh, mildly about it. So it kind of makes sense, right? But then look at our algorithms. It kind of has similar parts. It has a conscious grading mechanism which can distinguish between good uh, keyboard layout and bad layout, right? It's got an algorithm to understand, like, to make conscious decision, good or bad, right? Uh, there is a generations loop, which is like your preconscious, and there is mutations randomness, which you don't know what's there. It's like the number of keyboard layouts is almost infinite. It's so like classical combinatorial explosion. You cannot like process them all. You don't know what this thing is going to throw into your algorithm. So you can think about it as a subconscious. So, in a sense, this little script is actually living and thinking, just like you. It based on the same principles like what operates in here. Uh, it's weird talk. Um, where people normally go with this is like, is it self-aware? Does it really exist? 
kind of believe in God. I love humans. It's like we always kind of try to understand something from our own standpoint. Like, I don't know, can black people fly airplanes, right? Can, like, people do pretty weird shit. Like, <clears throat> bleep. <clears throat> uh, and we kind of tend to do the same with artificial intelligence, right? But let's consider what existence really is. Consider Nikolai. <laughs> Um, I'm just the guy in, like, in, in a weird calendar on my head. Uh, a few weeks ago I went to Bunnings and I bought electric drill. Bear with me. It... <laughs> I went back home, I took like old plastic containers, uh, drilled a bunch of holes in it and I made uh, like a toy for my cat. <laughs> well, why not? He's, he's a good dude. <laughs> um, but the question is, did I really choose to do it? Silence. <laughs> that, that's a good silence, I might be thinking. Well, there was this guy, uh, late 18th century um, philosopher named George Berkeley. Uh, you probably don't know him, he's already dead. But <laughs> he postulated this idea that uh, reality cannot exist without being preserved, uh, perceived. In a way, like modern quantum mechanics um, was inspired by this idea. He was talking about like your external reality, like chairs, tables, trees, mountains, like planets, other humans. He argued, he got like huge books to argue it, but he's right. Uh, but he argued that without you perceiving it, it doesn't really exist. You can't really reason other way around. It's a logical explanation. But you can take it a bit further, right? If your external um, reality cannot exist without you perceiving it, but then how your mind exists? There must be something else that perceives your mind in order for it to exist. This guy is cool. Uh, <clears throat> uh, What's that Descartes? Pardon me? What about Descartes? He was wrong. He's like. <laughs> Anyways, so he kind of coined this idea that maybe like God or randomness or something like above your understanding actually dreams you up. They, that thing perceives you and therefore you exist and you, therefore you can think. In a sense, you kind of like cannot play a role in this universe, right? You've got like your character, you've got your like likes and dislikes, and you randomly acting on it. You have a free will, but you can exercise it in uh, spice of your role that you're playing, right? And the role you're playing is basically like human being. For example, Nikolai, he likes weird stuff. He likes builds things, right? So I kind of acted on my own free will, but I was acting within my character. So you can uh, argue the same about what we just built, right? This little script exists in like in all these uh, like electromagnetic impulses, right? Somewhere, but all the rules the same apply to it, right? It has a role we created for it, but we do not have control over his decisions. We don't know what the randomness is going to throw at it. Therefore, you can argue that it is conscious, it is, exists, although it's 50 lines of code. This is where I kind of want to leave you with, right? Uh, this, is a little, this is a little script, 50 lines of code. But you can argue the same principle about like super complex machines, about deep learning or whatever Google does in their secret laboratories. Uh, it's still a piece, a thing that human created. It was thought through. It was coded. So the principle stays the same. How do you perceive it, right? Whether you choose to think about it as like a pure mechanical thing or a being is really up to you. It's weird that in this age, 
and we as engineers can run into the same existential problems as philosophers before. It runs into the same problem of existence of like God, basically. That's what it is, right? And uh, the best answer so far we have to this question is it depends whether you believe in it or not, basically. So, like, as a human being, you have a choice. You can address it, like, as an engineer, purely mechanically, and be boring and gray. Or you can actually think about it as, like, as something you're responsible for, because you created it. And it lives somewhere on a server, and it does things. And you don't really have control over what it does. Even if it just renders, like, HTML page. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Questions? So next time, next time my side is broken, I'll just say my director that it's just being naughty or something. <laughs> well, maybe, Actually, maybe it's being sick. <laughs> maybe it needs your help. <laughs> Be a responsible the question, parent. The question is like really stupid. So you have uh, this great power to decide which one is better, which one of the layouts. So did you take it somewhere? Did you create it by yourself? What kind of uh, parameters? How do you break which layout is better? Obviously, the only you created. Like it, it's like with babies, right? You've got your baby and you've got your neighbor's baby, right? <laughs> That's why, that's why programmers love their code more than anything else. I think he wants to know the fitness function. So how no, you call like the technical function. Like yeah, yeah. What's the fitness function? How do you determine that oh, it's better? Be uh, it's complicated. It's on uh, GitHub. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, let me tell you this. Like, I actually built like WebRTC application to track my fingers moving in real time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's complicated. Anyways, oh, more questions. Um, <laughs> good, good question. Uh, if you're really interested, go to this uh, website. It's called Nikolai.rocks. Um, there, there is a, like a whole blog dedicated to this thing. Um, I've been working on it for a year. I've uh, been through a lot of uh, iterations. Um, yeah, like there are more things I discover as I go through, right? Um, this script is kind of like, well, um, augmented subconscious, right? It produces things for me to think about. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, yeah, there is a layout. There is a layout. You can install it. There is even an training program. Uh, you can use it. Um, there are two generations. I'm working on a third one. Uh, it's on GitHub. Go to the website. It's there. Um, <laughs> I learned it. I learned it. Uh, but the problem is, the moment I learned it, I understand that there is something that can be improved. See, it's like it's, it's a very complex problem. Like no one can solve it, right? Your keyboard is like skewed weirdly, right? Your hands made of meat, and <laughs> English made of like cats and unicorns, right? It's all highly volatile substances when it comes to formalizing a solution. That's that's why AI, right? Like I want someone to think about it. Uh, my next step is basically uh, spread this algorithm deployed on uh, AWS Lambda. Hit it. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, but it, it's there. Like, it's almost done. Perfect, thank you, Nikolai.